I shared this meal prep with a friend of mine and she had a lot of success with it, so I decided I wanted to go ahead and share with you as well. Pronto? Allora andiamo a cucinare! Ciao my friends! Welcome to my kitchen. This is where I teach you easy recipes for everyday cooking and today is super easy because it's meal prep. If you have one hour that you could spare, you can prepare for the rest of your week. So let me show you how easy it is to do that and then the method that I use. And I hope you'll have just as much success with this as my friend did. So the first thing we want to do is we want to start with our grain. I'm using a brown rice and because that usually takes a little bit longer, about an hour, uh, that's why I like to start. And by the time the brown rice is done cooking, everything should be done. That's why I say in an hour you should be done. So I'm using um, one and a half cups of brown rice and to that I'm going to add a teaspoon of salt and about three cups of water. Now if you use an Instapot or a stove, just do it according to the directions to whatever uh, you are using to cook your, your brown rice. And we're just going to give that a stir just to kind of mix everything up. And I'm going to turn that brown rice on and let that cook and just set that aside. Now the next thing we need to do is um, our roasted vegetables. So you can choose whatever vegetables you would like. I chose um, non-starchy vegetables. Um, this is great if you are doing the Mediterranean diet. All this that I'm going to be showing you today is perfect for that. Of course, the ingredients will vary depending on how many people are in your family, but this is about what I do for um, my, myself and my husband, and this lasts us for a whole week, lunches and dinners. So, uh, pick the vegetables you like. First thing I'm going to do is get my spices ready. And again, this is according to um, how salty you like it and what flavors you like, herbs and things like that, but we're going to use all dry herbs. So I'm going to start with two teaspoons of salt, a teaspoon of paprika, a teaspoon of onion powder. It doesn't have to be exact, just a teaspoon of uh, garlic powder and a good heaping teaspoon of Italian herbs. Now my seasoning is pretty boring. This is pretty much my standard go-to seasoning for almost everything that I do. Again, you know, whatever you prefer, use that seasoning blend. You just want to mix all that up so everything gets fully incorporated. Now the reason I get this ready is because I will be seasoning my vegetables separately and so that I don't have to keep going in and out um, uh, of all the spice containers. I just got everything here and I can use this. All right, the next thing is we have our vegetables already cut up. I went ahead and I cut mine up ahead of time, um, which is fine, you can do that. If you know that your vegetables are all gonna cook at the same amount of time, you can put everything in here, toss it all on the sheet pan, and you're good to go. But if you're not sure how long these will take, um, this is how uh, I find is the best way to do it. So I'm gonna start with my carrots. I'm going to add them to um, this pan that I'm going to be seasoning everything with and I want to add just enough oil to coat the vegetables and then I'm going to add some seasoning again just enough to coat the vegetables and then with my hands I'm going to toss and if you find it's a little too dry then we can just go ahead and add a little bit more olive oil. There's really no rocket science to this it's just uh, by eye and taste. Okay, so now that I have seasoned my carrots, I'm going to place them on my sheet pan. Now the next one is going to be onions. I like to add the onions because it gives a good flavor to all the vegetables. Again, same process, olive oil and toss. Now if you're not familiar with how to roast vegetables, I'm going to include a link on um, how, eight tips on how to roast vegetables the proper way so you don't have to worry about your vegetables um, getting soggy or burnt or anything like that. So you might want to check out this video and I will include it in the bottom. Now we're just going to add our onions. Next are zucchini. Okay, now one thing you don't want to do is you don't want to crowd the pan, so we're going to do this with two cookie sheets. Um, my first one is ready. I've got the oven preheated at 350 degrees, so I'm going to place this in the oven. Now I have some cauliflower. I love roasted cauliflower. They're really yummy. I am going to roast the cauliflower 
and the Brussels sprouts on a separate sheet because I actually like them to be a little bit more charred and I don't want those vegetables to be charred. But these a little bit more charred actually brings out the sweetness in them that I really like. So I am gonna keep it on one cookie sheet. And again, if you start roasting vegetables a lot, you'll know which ones cook well, how long, and, and things like that, so. And last is our Brussels sprouts. I know not everyone loves Brussels sprouts, but they are super, super good for you. A um, lot of fiber, um, they're, just, they're just really good. And if you don't like them, just try cooking them different ways, because sometimes that's all it takes, is just cooking it a different way. Now the Brussels sprouts I am gonna place on here, but I'm going to place them face down. Okay, perfect. Okay, so the next thing I'm gonna add are beets. Um, I don't think a lot of people cook beets or think about beets, but they are so good for you. Um, they come in yellow, red, uh, different colors. I like the golden beets because they don't stain your hands when you uh, peel them, but you know, it's whatever you like, the red or the golden brown, and they're super simple to uh, cook. So these are pretty big, so I am gonna cut them in half. Of course, I've washed them and I've left the skin on. I'm just gonna place them on this piece of foil. And because my um, foil's not big enough, I'm gonna place another one. And we're just gonna close this up, create a seal. So we just wanna close this up tight so it will steam in here, just like so. And I'm just gonna place this on the middle of this uh, cookie sheet. And I'm adding uh, the beets to this because this will probably take at least an hour um, to cook the beets and to get for these to get nice and charred will be about an hour as well. And so I'm going to place these in the oven as well at 350 degrees. Next is our chicken. That's the, um, the meat that I'm going to be using. If you don't want to use chicken, I mean, you could use you know any type of meat you want. If you want beef or pork chops, um, I would use the chicken or um, even mushrooms if you wanted to make it more vegetarian. Um, so we're just gonna, in that same bowl that we've been using, we want to add our chicken. And I'm using chicken breast. You could use any cut of the chicken you want. And again, we are going to um, coat in some olive oil. We have the seasoning that we've been using. And what I like to do is I'd like to add a little bit of lemon juice to it. So I'm just gonna take a half of a lemon and squeeze that juice in there to, just to give it some extra flavor. And we just wanna coat all the chicken with the seasoning. And we just wanna place that on a cookie sheet as well. Now if you're making dinner, um, and this is going to be your dinner, you might, it's, it's just as easy to go ahead and add all these extra components and, and double up or quadruple so this way you're actually good for the whole week and you don't have to worry about cooking every single night. Okay, so now this chicken I'm gonna place in um, 350 degree oven and cook until the internal temperature is 165. So next on the list of meal prepping are snacks. We all love to have snacks, so it's just a matter of getting the snacks put, placed, put together um, and picking the right ones and how to store them. So let's start with the carrots. So I have washed them. I leave the skin on uh, my carrots because there's a lot of nutrient and fiber in there. And so I will just cut the ends off. And the tip to making sure that your carrots don't dry out is to put them in water. So these are the cups that I will use. And so I just kind of measure my carrots to see about where they'll fit. And so I just kind of do a little indentation there. And then I will know to cut my carrot right at that length. So then I've got all my carrots here. And don't worry about these ends because we're gonna use them. They will definitely not go to waste. Those are perfect, okay. So because I like my carrots long to snack on, I'm gonna cut them lengthwise. If you like them in you know, medallions, you can go ahead and cut them that way as well. And I usually cut them about a third, just like that. And then I will place them in my cup. Once our um, cup is filled, we just wanna take some water 
and just place our water in here to fill it up and that will keep our carrots nice and moist and they won't dry out. So if you've ever had carrots that, that dry out that you save them to snack on, it's just because they need more moisture. So that's one way to do it. Another way to do it is you could take a damp paper towel and wrap them and place them in a plastic bag and that will also keep them moist. So those are two different ways that you can keep your um, carrots nice and moist. All right, so we'll set that aside. And the other thing is now we can try to find some other vegetables that we like. Um, there's these cute little baby uh, cucumbers that I like. Um, so I'll put those in a container. And it's good if you can actually place it all in the same container, because then you'll be in the habit of grabbing that same container and everything's already prepped in here. So you don't have to worry. Um, I also like some green beans. If you get the really small, thin ones, they're nice and crunching and they're tender. So we're gonna place those in here as well. I also like olives, I like to snack on those, so I'm gonna place the olives in here as well. And last is uh, bell peppers. Um, so we just wanna go ahead and uh, slice up our bell pepper. So I like to slice my be bell pepper like this so that I can get these nice long strips and it's perfect for, um, for a dip, which I'm gonna show you how to make next. And then we just take our bell pepper and we place that in our container as well. There you go. And now one of the things you can do is you can put a paper towel on the bottom just so that um, it absorbs any of the excess moisture and that'll help keep this uh, lasting a lot longer. But now everything is in one container and you just have to grab this container and you've got all your snacks. Now let me show you how to make the dip. For the dip, um, I like to use the uh, white cannellini beans. You could do garbanzo, you could do any type of bean that you like, but we are gonna do a bean dip. So we start with one can of rinsed uh, cannellini beans. To that, I'm gonna add a clove of garlic. And I'm gonna measure out a teaspoon of salt. And again, the um, spices according to what you like. And a half a teaspoon of onion powder and a half a teaspoon of garlic powder. All right, and to that, I'm gonna add about two tablespoons of olive oil. I'm also gonna add about two tablespoons of water. Now, you might need more water depending on how um, thick or thin you like your dip. That half of a lemon that we used for the chicken, we're gonna use the other half and just squeeze that juice in here. And now we go, wanna go ahead and blend this until it's all nice and smooth. And it's a little bit thick, so we're gonna add a little bit more water. So we do wanna taste it, make sure there's enough salt. Another seasoning that you like, that we like it, and it's perfect. So now we're just gonna go ahead and put it in a container. So now it's perfect, our snacks are ready. We have our snacks here, we can just grab. We've got our dip right here that we can just grab. Mmm, and it's so good and it's already prepared for you. We'll just put that away until we're ready for our snacks. So the next thing we're gonna do is get our salads ready because salads is a great way to get our fiber and get our nutrients in and we can also incorporate that with a lot of the foods that we've already prepared. So what I like to do here is I actually like to portion out my lettuce so all I have to do is grab the container. So there's a couple ways that we can do this. So the first one, I'm just gonna place my lettuce in my containers and we can just close them up at this point. But what I actually like to do is use some of the vegetables and get it all ready so I don't have to worry about it. Um, so the problem when you do that is you have to be careful uh, what toppings you use in here because you don't want um, any moisture to add to your salad. So it's very important that you use um, the dry vegetables and by dry I mean like the um, the green beans, the carrots, or even the tomatoes. And that's the tomatoes not sliced. But there is a way to get around it if you wanna add other things like slicing your tomatoes or you wanna add cucumbers. And let me show you how to do that. All right, so what we need to do here is we need to create a barrier so that the moisture doesn't get to the lettuce and, and get it soggy. So I usually put a piece of plastic wrap right on top. And then to that, so I'm gonna start with my green beans. I'm gonna slice them. I like to slice them in bite-sized pieces, a little bit on the bias, so I can take that and add that on top of the plastic wrap. And those carrots that I had earlier, the ends that uh, 
were just too long. I'm just gonna go ahead and slice those up and add those carrots there. And take my cucumber in slices and add that. I'm going to slice my baby tomatoes in half and just place those on top of my plastic wrap. There, so now I don't have to worry about my lettuce getting soggy or too moist from this, and I can just close it up, and then when I'm ready to eat it, I can just take the plastic off and then just mix everything together. So the salads are good to go, whether you add the toppings on or you don't, and you wanna add them later, either way works. So we can put those away. Okay, for the salad dressing, um, I say this many times here, never buy salad dressing. Always make it yourself. It's so simple, and it's really easy. It's just basically a three to one ratio. Um, three parts oil, one part acid. And the acid could be anything that you would like, whether it's balsamic vinegar, regular vinegar, lemon juice, orange juice, grapefruit juice, uh, rice vinegar, whatever that acid is, we just need one part to three parts oil. So let me show you how easy it is to make salad dressing. Because I'm using the lemon, I do wanna roll it just to kind of break up the cells inside so that I can get as much juice out as possible. So I'm gonna slice that in half and using my awesome lemon juicer, and if you haven't seen this, it is on the Green Olive uh, website. I have a link below. It's very heavy duty and it actually is large enough to hold uh, an orange and yet it can even hold a lime. So we just wanna go ahead and squeeze our lemon juice. And so we'll just measure out how much lemon juice we got. So there's one tablespoon, two tablespoons. So we have two tablespoons of our acid, so times three for our um, oil would be two times three is six. So six tablespoons of oil. And you always wanna use a good quality um, oil. I like to use extra virgin olive oil. And the spices, again, it's my usual combination that I have. It's not really exciting, but that's, it's what works for me. So again, you can adjust this to what works for you. So I'm gonna add um, a teaspoon of Italian seasoning, half a teaspoon, of garlic powder and half a teaspoon of onion powder, a teaspoon of salt, and of course we need a binder because liquid and oil don't mix or connect combine. So we need to add um, some mustard and I usually add about a teaspoon and that will uh, help keep that emulsification. One of the things I like to do is I like to just place it all in a mason jar, close it up and give it a nice shake. And you can see how you have this great emulsification. Um, so you can go ahead and taste it, and make sure there's enough salt. If you want to add any pepper or other seasoning, you can go ahead and do it. But your salad dressing is already made, so that's perfect. So we can set that aside. I just took the vegetables out of the oven and I just want to check to see if they're cooked. And the best way to do that is just place your fork in the vegetables. The carrots are just a little bit firm. If you like it that way, that's fine. The zucchini obviously are soft and the onions are soft. So for me, this is perfect, so I'm gonna leave this out and let's go ahead and check on the other vegetables. All right, so here are the cauliflower and the Brussels sprouts. Now they do have a nice char on them and if you like them like this, you can definitely take them out, but I actually like to go a little bit further and really get it nice and charred. So at this point, I'm just going to flip my cauliflower over just so that the other side can get nice and um, colored as well. And I know for a fact that the um, uh, beets are not done yet, so we're just gonna leave those a little bit longer and I'm gonna return this all back into the oven. All right, so the next part is snacks, afternoon snacks. Um, of course, the vegetable snacks could be afternoon too, but sometimes we like something a little bit more crunchy, savory, so I like to actually make my own trail mix. I think it's way better. When you make it yourself, you have more control of the ingredients. Sometimes trail mix has a lot of the unhealthy oils and coatings and things like that. So this way we know exactly what's in it and we know it's good for us. So first thing I have here are uh, my nuts. And I chose uh, to use uh, pecans, slivered almonds, and cashews. And because I like mine toasted, I toasted them up in the oven. So I'm gonna add those in here. And so I have about a cup of the cashews and a cup of the pecans and about half a cup of the um, slivered almonds. But again, you can use any variation that you want. To that, I also um, am adding some uh, sliced coconut flakes. And again, I like to toast them, so I added those into the oven and just put them on broil for a few minutes until they got nice and toasty. And I'm gonna add some dried fruit, because um, that kind of helps give that sweetness that we want. Uh, when it comes to dried fruit, I wouldn't add a lot of dried fruit, maybe about a half a cup. Um, so I've got some dried cherries 
and you can add any combination that you would like. Um, and then I also have some dried blueberries that I'm going to add. You can add cranberries, you can add banana chips, anything you want, um, but just remember not to add more than total half a cup. So um, I've got about a quarter cup of each. And to that, um, I also like to add some chocolate. Now I happen to like this brand of chocolate because it comes in little uh, chunks. And I like the little chunks, so it kind of gives me something you know, to chew on. Um, you could do the chocolate chips if you like, um, but I like these chunks, plus I like um, Schaffenberger. I think they're a great chocolate company. And so I'm gonna probably add about half a cup of the chocolate. And you could chop them up even into smaller pieces if you like, that's totally up to you. And then we're just gonna mix everything. All right, and then I've got these little um, ball jars uh, that I will just go ahead and fill. So these are perfect, um, so I'll just put these on the counter and I will grab one every day when I go and so it gives me something to snack on. I'll leave it in the car and uh, it just makes me feel satiated and happy because I feel like it's uh, satisfied my sweet tooth. So everything came out of the oven except the beets. The beets are still in there so I know I got this done under an hour because the beets always take at least an hour. Um, but we've got our rice, our chicken is cooked and so I put together um, some ideas. Uh, you can have just the vegetables, vegetables with rice, uh, chicken with rice and vegetables and just certain vegetables. We put the Brussels sprouts, cauliflower and the carrots here. We've got a chicken salad. We added a chicken breast. You don't even have to. You could just have the straight vegetables with this. Of course, we got our rice that we can add to things. Rice is also something that you can add to a salad if you want. And of course, our our snacks of our uh, crudite with our bean dip. And then of course we also have our trail mix that we made. So this here is good for a whole week for two people based on what my husband and I eat. But again, you'll have to adjust it for what works for you and your family um, by adding more or less. And then of course add what you like. And so this is just an idea. It's just a base for you to kind of get started. I hope it helps you out. I'd love to hear in the comments below if this did help you out or if you have some ideas or suggestions of maybe some meal prep that you would like. And um, there was an ambulance that just went by. <laughs> anyway, so I, I hope you guys give this one a try. I'm Chef Lucia and I'll see you. Until next time, ciao, ci vediamo dopo.